What's up, everyone? This is Squigs, and we are back with another episode of Squigs Rob Macron. We're gonna jump right into Ice Caves. This is, um, yeah, this is Return of Shadower. But we got, I, I don't have too much time right now. And I would like to get an episode in while I do have the time. I, I, have, I have a decent amount of time. I have enough to do an episode, but I don't have much time to waste. I did not even see those. I thought they were part of the background. That's how quick I'm jumping into this one. Yeah, I gotta head out in a little while. I can kind of fudge the time I leave a little bit. But I'm gonna hang out with some friends, so obviously I don't want to hold people up. Oh god, the ice. I forgot that we had this to look forward to. I'm so bad with the ice. Ugh. Yeah, I'm just gonna go chill with some, some high school friends. Um, or some friends that I went to high school with, I guess. It sounds weird when you say high school friends, I guess. Like, yeah. But like, I don't know, I, a group of my friends I think of as high school friends because I met like this whole circle in high school. So yeah, it's some of them. We're gonna play some uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which is pretty interesting so far. It's not something that I'm really super familiar with. He has four hits, I think that's why. Maybe that's why I couldn't kill him in that other episode, like three episodes ago. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I started playing Dungeons & Dragons with a group of friends. Um, it's something I always kind of wanted to do when I was younger, but n no one, like, ever fucking talked about it, or I knew, like, zero people that played it. And, um, randomly, yeah, my friends were just talking about it recently, and I was like, yeah, let me try this shit out. Let me give it a shot. And I love it. It turns out it's even more fun than I originally thought it was going to be. Uh, it's a really cool combination between, like, between uh, role playing and an actual really fun game, like I think the gameplay of Dungeons and Dragons is pretty fucking sweet by itself. Like um, even if there was no role playing in it, I think it would just be a fun game to play. And the role playing, I'm obvious, I'm um, not obviously, but um, honestly is what I wanted to say. Not very good at it. I'm okay. I'm still awkward a little bit. I'm not a role player really. It's not really something that I would consider a strength of mine. I think, yeah, I've mentioned in past episodes, I think, that I'm not really, like, a storyteller. I'm not really a story writer, that kind of stuff. I'm more, I'm creative in different ways, but it's not usually, like, acting and storytelling and coming up with stuff. But, that being said, I, oh shit, we're screwed. I've been having a blast doing it. Like, you have to come up with a character and a little backstory, and then you have to roleplay into all the... The situations that are happening, which I find trickier than writing something for my like, it's easy to be at home and like write a character backstory because you have infinite time. But on the spot, what is this? Exit. All right, we fucking made it. Hold on. I'm waiting. You, I'm waiting, you joy. <sighs> Sorry, I need to get a sip of water there. I'm dying over here. Really dehydrated today. Oh, press A or B. Not start. Not start. What is this? Water and spikes. This is going to be miserable. <sighs> but yeah, it's a lot easier. Hold on. This is a dangerous level. Avoid the spikes with water. Okay. Oh, God. What's going to happen here? Oh, geez. This is... If this is the one of the moving things, it's really going to be tricky. Um, Because it'll go like... Oh, fuck. I'm not looking forward to this level. I... Of all the levels it could be, this one's probably like the worst for someone on a time crunch. Damn it, you can't even... So I have to like slow walk through all of that probably? But yeah, okay, so like coming up with a backstory is one thing, because you can do it at home at your own pace, but like trying to do it live is... It's just tricky for me. It's not something I'm particularly skilled at. So yeah, it's coming a little bit slow, but um, that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it. You know what I mean? It's fun to try. I just don't consider myself particularly skilled at it. So yeah, we have like a little party of about five of us, I guess. Um, ugh! Wow, that was close to bonking my head. And I'm pretty sure I just have to slow walk my way through all of this. So I'm going to speed this up. Fucking dumb. Why did I do that? Like I saw it coming down, but I still did it. Yeah, so I went for um, a rogue. I, I probably don't have time to go into everyone's backstory. I would love to tell you all about my little backstory stuff I came up with so far, but it, it'd probably just take too long overall, especially if I'm going to... So I'm going to just briefly describe everyone in the party, I think. So I'm a rogue, kind of like a shifty con man type rogue. Uh, 
with like a sordid background of like swindling and shit like that from a big city in the desert kind of like oh my god that's so fucking hard do i have to jump from no that was the right area to jump from but i just had to tap less i guess i don't know the underwater physics not easy i can't leave either i was gonna go get some power-ups so yeah i'm a shifty shifty con man rogue type just kind of like greedy and fucking um devious <laughs> it's fun to play that that type in the game i got uh 10 daggers around my belt <laughs> and 50 darts in my bag so i didn't know what to buy when we started the game like everyone else bought shit like sleeping bags and lanterns and stuff and i was like well if i'm not gonna have a real strong weapon i should i was like i should buy a ton of like ammo because like i don't know what else i'm gonna need i'm going back and get those things I'm, then we'll continue that all right let's see if this is easier now that i have damage boosts on my side so yeah, I'm a shifty rogue, uh, with ten daggers, and yeah, I didn't know what to buy at the end of the game, so I bought ten daggers, put them in my belt, bought a bag full of fifty darts, I figured, like, I wouldn't have time to, like, get more ammo, and I'd be chucking them everywhere, it's, it's like my main attack is, like, ranged, and then when they close in, I go for the daggers, I can also throw the daggers, that was what I was thinking when I bought stuff out, but everyone else bought stuff like lanterns, and sleeping bags, and fucking food, and shit, and, ah, that's tough. What I didn't realize about these darts is they're the size of, like, lawn darts. They're like little mini javelins. So I have a backpack filled with 50 javelins, and, like, I don't know what to do with them. I'm gonna try to sell them at the next town I go to. Um, let's see. I'll just go around the room in the way that we sit. So there's, uh, my name's Shen. Shen with a question mark, because I've decided that I'm gonna tell people a different name every time I talk to them. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna be, like, one of those don't trust anyone type, ro type rogues. So, like, I think I said my name was Clark or something before. The first thing I said to my party was Shen. So people started calling me Shen. But then whenever we meet someone else, I'm like, oh. I'm like, nice to meet you. My name's Clark. And then they all look at me funny. So they call me Shen with a question mark. Um, and then uh, next to my right, or to my left, rather, is Mort. Mort the Short. He is a dwarf monk. And <laughs> this monk is fucking brutal. Oh, my God. This monk is brutal. Uh, so he goes in, no, no weapons, no armor, maybe a little bit of armor, but like no weapons and fights with his hands and feet, basically. And he just runs in there and fucking like tears people apart. Now, normally he would just be like kicking and punching people as this tiny little dwarf, like kicking and punching their ankles. But literally everything he's attacked so far, he's rolled a 20. And if you don't know how D&D &D works, it's like, I'd be like, oh, I go to stab this ogre with my knife, right? And if I roll like a 10, it'd be like, oh, you stabbed the ogre, he seems hurt. If I roll a 7, it might be like, oh, you try to stab the ogre and you graze him. If I roll like a 4, it'll be like, oh, you missed the ogre with your stab. If I roll like a 1, it'll be like, you missed the ogre with your stab, you trip and you fall over. God damn it, I did not hit A in time. You fall over and you're vulnerable to attack. You know what I mean? Something like that. I'm so fucked here. Okay. And if you roll like a 17, you'd be like, you stab him greatly through the chest and it breaks his bones. You roll a 20, it's like you stab him in both of his eyes and he's blind and then he falls off a cliff. So like, yeah, like you get a 20, it's like a critical pass. Ugh. A one's like a critical failure. So, um, Mort the Short has been rolling more critical passes than, or just crits in this case than like anyone so every time he goes to attack someone he just like tears them limb for limb so just just by chance of the dice roll he's this vicious little dwarf monk um he's been great fun <laughs> because like uh of his awesome rolls uh next to the left is like uh a tr uh druid a druid with a, a hawk for a pet that keeps fucking spying on our party <laughs> because he's not he's not really like a member of our party so much yeah, well he is now but at the beginning he was just kind of following around doing a quest when we were all getting associated um so yeah he has a little a little falcon buddy or a hawk or something Ugh, i hate that and um yeah he also he's got like the ability to turn into a tree or something like that i think he can transform he didn't take like bear or anything he took tree he's going for like healing and protection he was like, um, his backstory is, is pretty cool. I'm actually going to talk a little bit about his, um, cause this is one of my favorites. Uh, basically he was like, he was stolen ugh, by a traveling mall as he described it, which is like some guy that has like a, uh, like 10 
like, covered wagon style things, and then rolls them into town, and then, like, um, tries to sell wares to people. Like, so he, like, drives, he's like a mobile store, like a, like, well, it's like a mall, because there's, like, so many different shops. So he was stolen to be, like, he was, like, enslaved to be the healer, like, the pay me a nickel and I'll heal you of your wounds kind of thing, part of the traveling store. And the guy that owned the traveling store, the traveling mall, um, had a son who got sick. Come on. Are you fucking kidding me? This is dumb. Ugh. I'm dumb. <sighs> I fucked myself over for no reason. So yeah, he had a son who got sick. And... Come on. Basically... No, I'll just wait. Basically, uh, he tried to heal him, but he was wearing full leather armor. He had, like, fucked it up, basically, in his backstory. So couldn't heal his son, killed this guy's son, and had to flee for his life. So that's how he became part of our party. Like, he had to leave. He had to leave now before this guy fucking killed him for not healing his son right. And, um... Yeah, so one of the cool things about him is he's a healer, but, like, since he was always a slave healer for, like, a store, he thinks that healing always costs money. So, like, even if our party needs heals, he'll, like, ask us to throw us a silver or something like that. <laughs> so, like, that kind of cracks me up. Um... Shit, this is the end of the level, and I want to make it the end of the video, so very quickly, I'll tell you about the other two characters. One of them is a barbarian who is illiterate and hates it when you notice that and goes into a blind rage. Like, people just keep commenting on how he can't read or he'll fuck up instructions or something like that and then go into a rage. And he keeps fucking up my, my and Mort's ability to be stealthy to sneak around because he just wants to run in and smash things. But he rolls ones all the time, so he'll run in and intimidate, like, to try to, like, stop the party and then he'll just fall on his face. So he's got the opposite problem of Mort the Short where he rolls so bad that he's, like, ineffectual and he's become, like, a goofball tryhard. And the last one is Scale. Scale, first of the lizard kind. He is a lizard person mage who is basically like he's got a very mysterious background right now he just he chose not to like reveal it at the start and is instead like feeding it through the roleplay which is a really cool way to do it i'm not very this is my first time so i kind of just told people my backstory i didn't really get it out during roleplay a lot of people did um it's a newbie group which is nice but um yeah i, I won't drag this out anymore i just wanted to finish up so people weren't like disappointed where i didn't do that i don't like to talk when there's no gameplay going though so we'll save any more dungeons and dragon talk for the next time when we come back if i remember to do it anyways Thank you, friends. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Um, I'll be back with another one and hopefully some updates on how D&D went tonight. And I hope to see you all there. So take care and have a wonderful afternoon.